Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everyone is doing well. Hope you had a good and safe Happy New Year. So we can finally flush this dumpster fire of a year known as 2020 down the fucking toilet. So let's hopefully we get a better 2021 than we did 2020. But anyway, today, today I'm doing an update. I haven't done a collection update in a little bit. I have a good stack of some new shit I'm going to go through. So before I, before I ramble too much, we're listening to this. Broken Bones, Dem Bones, and also has the decapitated, I guess, EP or whatever. Good metal, kind of punk, borderline metal with, I guess, crossover, but not thrashy, but it's more just metal slash punk 50-50, but good shit. If you know your crossover, I'm sure you're familiar with Broken Bones. Okay, first up, I got a 7-inch. Hyperdontia Excretion from the Flesh. If you, if you pay attention to Underground Modern Death Metal, I'm sure you're familiar with Hyperdontia at this point. They're definitely one of the more popular bands in the more modern death metal scene. And obviously they share members with with Undergang and Frenolith. But of all those bands, Undergang is definitely my favorite, but that's kind of an unfair comparison considering they have by far the most material, so there's that. Cool labels. I I believe that, yeah, there was a cassette pressing of the same EP, but it had three extra songs. I believe it had a live song, and it had two covers. I know they covered Cannibal Corpse song, I don't remember which one, but they also covered Chrome Leck from Dark Throne, which is one of the best songs of a Soul Side Journey. It's put out through Masako on Uho, but I got it through Dark Descent, because a lot of the, I think most of the Hyper Doctor stuff you can get through Dark Descent. And a lot of the Misako and Uho stuff you can get through Dr. Scent also. So that's very cool. Hyperdontia excretion from the flesh. I wish, I wish this was longer, but... Whenever we get the next full length, I'm sure it will be great. Because they put out one of the better full lengths in 2018, Nexus of Teeth. So I'm definitely looking forward to whatever Hyperdontia does in the future. Hyperdontia excretion from the flesh. Okay, next up we got another 7 inch, then we'll go to some 12 inches. No CDs or tapes this time, I'll show some of those next update. This is the split between Gorophilia and Undergone. Of these two bands, I prefer Gorophilia because they're more my style, but honestly I prefer the Undergang song on this split more than the Gorophilia song. Well, Gorophilia is basically, they're writing better Morbid Angel records recently than Morbid Angel was actually doing, so... I might be dumb to say, but it's really good, like, Covenant to, Covenant slash Formulas, Gateways, Arrow, Mobile Angel Worship, but honestly, the last three Mobile Angel records have either been, like, barely average or total shit. So at least it, the, we got a band that's carrying the torch and writing better Mobile Angel riffs than fucking Mobile Angel has been, but. And then Undergang is definitely... Of the Kill Town Big Three, they're definitely my favorite, like I said. Well, Go Feeler, I think, is more riff oriented. Undergang's more nasty, so if you want the more riff oriented stuff, listen to Go Feeler, but if you want the more gross, nasty stuff, listen to Undergang. But if you're gonna listen to Go Feeler, I, I suggest start with this record. This one's definitely my favorite that they've done. But the record from. 2020 and the eye of nothing was also great I'm still missing the debut, but I'll get that sometime soon. I need to get that Does it come with anything the black vinyl but cool simple labels Ophelia side Undergong side uh, There's no name I guess just the Undergang Go Affiliate Split doesn't have an actual split name. Again, put out through Musaku on Uho. I got this through, I think, Nuclear War now. So I'm sure they still have copies, and if you're overseas, you can probably check Musaku on Uho. Yeah, Go Affiliate and Undergang Split, great material. Okay, done with the 7 inches. Let's look, look at some 12 inches. This is, I guess you could say, a staple of early 80s, kind of like, not power metal, but it's the 80, 
80s heavy metal. This is Face 1 with the Spectre Within. So to me, this sounds like a mix of Merciful Fate meets Iron Maiden, but it kind of puts its own unique spin on both of those bands' styles. All the songs are kind of epic, like Merciful Fate had, where all the songwriting is kind of, not long necessarily progressive, but very epic sounding. But the song, when I say they're long song, like long and drawn out the way, they, they, you will actually somehow stay engaged the entire time despite how long some of the tracks are. There's also a really good amount of atmosphere, but not as much as Merciful Fate had, because on Don't Break the Earth and Melissa, they were pretty atmospheric. They created a very good atmosphere with their songwriting. It sounds very evil and atmospheric. But for Maiden, it kind of sounds... Well, for Maiden, it's very melodic, but you could argue this record is more melodic than Maiden was, and there's also a good sense of, like, kind of progressive leanings, but Maiden weren't that progressive at this at this point yet, because this came out in 85, and, yeah, Maiden released Power Slate before, so that wasn't really progressive. They didn't get progressive until, like, somewhere in time with Seven Suns, so it's definitely more progressive than Maiden was, but... This record's not very heavy or super aggressive, but it's def it's kind of fast, but not as fast as like Thrash or anything, but I would say as fast as like the early power metal giants from the US, like Omen, but with the early 80s power metal, at least for me, the scene, there's a big difference between the early 80s stuff and the late 80s stuff, because the early 80s stuff is definitely more, more influenced by the new wave of British heavy metal. It's definitely more kind of rock based where the later stuff like Halloween and Black, well, the first couple Halloween and early Blind Guardians definitely more influenced by Thrash. The debut record by this band, Nylon Brocken, is definitely less progressive, so if you want them at their least progressive, I would suggest to check out the debut. And the vocals, at least for me, it sounds like it take a little bit of Bruce Dickinson from Maiden, a little bit of Geddy Lee from Rush, and a little bit of King Diamond, so mix those three guys together, that's what you sound, this sounds like. The pro production's also nice and clear, clear so you can hear what's make what everything what fuck the production is also nice and clear so you can hear everything that's being played it's not like muddy sounding but it's also not super well produced so it's not like mechanical it's very human sounding but anyway there's the front back track listing put out through metal blade reissue cool blue love that old school metal blade logo I know, I think the, the record after this, not the Spectre Within, it's this one, fuck. Awaken the Guardian, the record after this, is, it seems to be mostly regarded as the best material, but for me it's this record, because this is a good bridge between the debut record and that, because it's more progressive than the debut, but less so than the follow-up, so if you want something that's more progressive, check out... The follow-up, if you want something less progressive, check out the debut. But for my money, this is the best record. So if you like kind of early 80s, slightly progressive early 80s power metal, but more closer to Omen than, say, Blind Guardian, if you don't know the first Fates one, the first two Fates 1 records, this is definitely my favorite of the first two, but the debut is great too. So that is Fates 1 with, with the Spectre Within. Great record. Okay, next up we go from a early 80s... Proto Power Metal classic to a kind of, I guess you could say it's underrated thrash, but I know a lot of people that praise it pretty highly. There's an Onslaught with the Force, so this is the original, this is the second Onslaught record originally released in, I think, 85, 85, or 84, or 86, one of those years. But if you don't know Onslaught, to me this sounds like a mixture of, say, like, Darkness Descends, Era Dark Angel, mixed with Hell Awaits, Era Slayer, but when I say that, I mean the vocal-wise, it sounds a lot like Don Dottie, because it has, it was like, it's more like high-pitched, but not in like a King Diamond type of way, but in more like his vocal range type of way, with just like some like random yells that he does, that the singer does throughout the record, and, and what I get from Slayer is there's a pretty good dark sense of melody, especially that was on like Hell Awaits, with like, the more, like, somber, kind of atmospheric songs on their record. Like the title track, Hello Waits. And then it also has, this record also has some of the more aggressive riffing that was in the German scene. From the bands in the German scene, like, 
Destruction and Death Row and Sodom, but to me it definitely reminds me of Death Row a lot because it has a lot of that same kind of riffing style and vocalize it sounds a lot like the guy from Death Row also, but that's cool. The production's raw, but in a good way. It, you could, it doesn't sound shitty raw, but it's raw in like a sounds very typical mid-80s good thrash raw, so you can definitely make out what's going on. It doesn't sound like a mess, but it also sounds clear and you can hear it, but it's not overproduced though. And I know the first, well, and there's also some mid-paced songs on this record, but mid pace in the way the thrash bands world mid pace. It's, it's not like Pantera or some shit. But anyway, I know the debut was more aggressive, but to me this is the better of the two records. I think the songwriting is better on this record. But that's just me. Anyway, there was the front cover. Very cool. Band track listing, or the guys in the band track listing. Put out through High Roller Records, who I've said many times, they always do a great job with their reissues. They're easily my favorite label when it comes to doing reissues. I think all I think my destruction records are from High Roller. I have the Protector record, the first Protector record. That's a High Roller that reissued my Angel Dust record, my I my Iron Angel, and I'm just looking up here because I could, I just hung some of those posters yesterday. I'll put a picture. Yeah, if you don't, if you like kind of German style thrash and Slayer and early Dark Angel, and you don't know Onslaught, definitely a solid band to check out. Onslaught, The Force, great record. Okay, going from a old school classic to ha we have one of my most anticipated records of 2020, and I know it's probably some of your guys's. This is Undergong with not oh, fuck me. I'll drink, I leave it, which I don't speak Danish, I'm just a typical American who only speaks English, so I apologize if I butchered your Danish language, but anyway, at least for me, this is the most diverse underground record today, well, the most mature, because the songwriting is a lot better on this record, though it's not my favorite record by them, I still say the, the third record, and I can't pronounce up with album cover, that one's still my best, but this record, I think, is also the darkest, too. Like, some of the, like, melodic lead work. Well, not melodic, but kind of, like, I don't know. But just the solos are better on this record, too. Songwriting is better. And they also, in between, not as, like, an interlude, but in the middle of some of the songs, they add, like, a small, quick, like, not acoustic break, but, like, clean guitar kind of melody line thing. And I think this record is probably, I would say, the most atmospheric, but... Not really, there's a little bit of some dark atmosphere, but somehow, despite it being super gross and nasty sounding, there's still a bunch of memorable riffs on this one. You, there's a bunch, of, every song has like two or three riffs that you'll get stuck in your head. I I wish they would do a US tour, because I want to hear them play the first single from the song, Menes Gidea Yeah, I'm sure I butchered the shit out of that. And also, some of the riffs are kind of, not bouncy, that's a stupid term, because that makes it sound like it's new metal, but it's just catchy, like, you riffs, you think it's, you're not gonna like it, but suddenly you're, like, tapping your toe or humming along to the riffs, it's super catchy, yet disgusting, I don't know how they do it, but, anyway, and the production's nice and swampy and gross, but, I wish the guitar tone was a little bit thicker, that's my only gripe with this record, is I wish it had a slightly thicker guitar tone, but it sounds good, anyway, and the vocal-wise, this, the, Guitarist slash vocalist Dave, he reminds me a lot of Anti, Bo Anti Bowman from Demolic, but even grosser, but I would say his, this guy's vocals is lower than Anti's, but he doesn't have like the kind of frog kind of ribbit that Anti had, but this guy, I think his vocals are more kind of wet and, not nasally, but kind of wet and foggy sounding and super low and gurgly. Anyway. Front cover, amazing cover art. All the cover art's killer, but this is probably the best cover art to date. I'm probably gonna order a t shirt with that art on it soon. There's the back. I know he is the main songwriter and he does the vocals and guitar and he does most of the artwork and he owns Extremely Rotten Productions, which is cool. Masako on Uho, I pre ordered this from Dr. Sin. Simple labels, but they look cool. Love the logo. I know there were some problems with some of the pressings they got messed up, but luckily mine didn't, so it was only like a two week delay, so that was cool. 
And the lyrics are in Danish, so if you think death metal is even, if you think you can't understand death metal, the lyrics, be, having the lyrics in Danish make it even more of a pain in the ass. But I'm not, I'm sure most of us don't listen to death metal for the lyrical beauty. But. Yeah, Undergang, Live It, or Aldred, I Live It, great record, definitely worth the wait. Hey, going from one of the best death metal bands of the last few years to one of my favorite modern black metal bands. This is Cenotaph with Le Live It, Execute It. Yeah, I don't speak French, so I'm, sh I'm sure I butchered that. This is the debut demo from 2018, I think. Either 2018 or 2017. I know it wasn't any earlier than that, but it was one of those years. Anyway, these guys are... Melodic black metal from fans, but it's more riffy. It's not like it's not like dissection of Dawn or something, but it's definitely more melodic than say Dark Throne, but less so than Dawn. But musically, there's a good mixture of aggressive riffing and melodicism, but it's not like fast like something like Marduk or Cethereal. They don't get very blasty fast, but it it's probably the speed of when dissection gets faster. So that kind of fast, not full on blasting, but. And for a demo, this sounds really good. It's surprisingly how good it sounds just for a debut demo, but considering you can make really great sounding music with barely any, you don't even need a producer, you can do it on your computer and it sounds great nowadays, so not surprising. You can definitely make out every riff that they're playing and every instrument is very clear in the mix. And for the, if there was any, well, I would say if there's any more raw, be bad, but considering, and the vocals, it's for me. It, and honestly, with most black metal, obviously we listen to black metal because we like the riffs. But for me, the standard on this record is definitely the vocals. The vocals on this record are super great. I wish more bands would would do the style of vocals instead of like the typical like wretches that you hear in like mod, in most black metal like Dark Throne or whatever. The vocals on here like it's kind of like wolf like howls, but they're in the distance. It's very cool. I, I know that. These guys are in a, well, the vocalist is in another band from France, I don't remember which band, but he does the same vocals with that band. But anyway, front cover, very nice. And there's the back track listing, Nuclear War Now, put this out. And that's who I got this from. And that's what I also got that on stock record from. Order sheet. So if you like melodic black, melodic riffy black metal, this is definitely one of the best bands in the black metal scene in the last couple of years. But for me, the mixture of melo melody and aggressive, that's definitely a lot of the top tier shit. That's the stuff I look for in black metal. Stuff like this and Star Guys, that's the best shit for me. I, I love that stuff. When it's slightly more melodic and nice and riffy, that's how you win me over. So Cenotaph, Let a Little Bit, Execute, great record. Okay, next up we got another one of the best black metal bands going right now. This is Cult of Fire with tri fuck. Triumph Red. Yeah, I'm sure I butchered that too, but these guys I think are from Prague? I want to say Prague, but I could be wrong. And musically, there's a nice contrast bef between faster, more aggressive parts and kind of mid paced slower, more um, ambient parts, I guess is a good way to put it. But when it slows down, it's something kind of weird. When it slows down, the keys are more up front in the mix. When it's faster, you, the keys are kind of more in the distance. But when it slows down, you can kind of hear the keys more up front. But it's not annoying like Demu Borgia or some shit. The keys are actually pleasant. It actually works well with the music. Unlike most of Demu Borgia's stuff. But And the vocals, they're nothing special, but it works with the music. And they go back from the typical kind of like... Higher rest that you'd hear with Dark Throne or something to like a lower kind of vocals that you'd hear with something like Beherit or something. But not as like kind of whispery, not like the. It's not like kind of hollow, the, the kind of hollow type of vocals that Beherit had, but definitely more lower. And they also do something kind of weird with the riff writing is they ha they'll have a blast beat and they'll just play single notes, but not like single or tremolo, they'll just be like 
a blast will happen. It's like da 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 da. It sounds kind of weird with the blast happening, but it makes it have its very own unique sound. But Vogue did that a little bit on the first Bozen record, but these guys did that better. Anyway, and the riffs are kind of melodic too, but not in like a dissection type of melodic way, but definitely closer to say like McGuire than dissection. Anyway, there's the front. There's the back. I have no idea what that says. I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce what that says. I know they have, I think, three fullness after this. They had the one with all those crazy letters, and they had the double record that came out 2020 that I still need to get. Just standard black. I don't know how, how many colors this came on. I just got whichever was available. And this I also got through Nuclear War now. So if you like good, mo kind of melodic, riffy black metal with a very epic atmospheric tone to the music, Check, check out Cult of Fire if you're not familiar. Cult of Fire, the record I'm not going to attempt to pronounce again. Great record. Okay, going from black metal, we got the complete opposite end of the spectrum. This is anti Slimax with Scandinavian Jawbreaker. So these guys are a obviously Swedish crust punk band. And to me, it sounds like a mix of the Disrupt demos mixed with early Exploited and early GBH and, and a little bit of Discharge too, it has the very typical kind of kind of drum beat. It's not very fast, but it's kind of fast in like early 80s kind of simple punk beat very way. And the vocals are not screamed and not guttural, but kind of like in between, I guess. But And there's some good mixture of some metal riffing, but it's very much, well, I was going to say crust is like death metal for punk kids who are too stubborn to admit they like metal I guess so it's definitely closer to it's definitely the fine line between punk and death metal and a lot of the riffing there's a little bit of like early thrash riffing there's a tiny bit of early slayer I can hear in some of the riff writing anyway and the production before I show that and the production is nice and clear you can make out everything the guitar tone super awesome the drumming's nothing special, but definitely very well, very good drumming, and the bass tones. You can kind of hear the bass, but you have to turn up the receiver a little bit to hear the bass better. But anyway, there's the front, there's the back, the monkey dude, track listing, put out through Back on Black, I got this again through Duck Descent, when they had their last sale. Hang on, listen to this. Yeah, that song's fucking weird. Does this come with anything else? Oh yeah, I'm sure the record. Very nice white. Comes with a inner sheet. The monkey dude again, lyrics. Guys in the band. Very nice. So if you like Swedish, if you like Swedish crust punk or crust punk in general, like Disrupt and you don't know anti Simax, definitely a great band. anti Simax, Scandinavian, Jawbreaker, check this one out. Okay, next up we got an underrated, uh, a should-be classic from Poland. This is, fuck, what's it called again? Veeman Thrower, I Come In Peace. I believe they're only full-length record. I think they had a demo prior to this. And this is the only full length, either 92 or 93, but I could be wrong about that. Musically, it's kind of death grindy, but not in like a actual grindcore way, but say in like a more like, I guess, like Utopia Banish Era Napalm Death kind of way. It definitely reminds me of that era of Napalm Death musically, but not really vocally. He's not really barking like Barney did, but vocally, this reminds me a lot of the guy from... Across the crown, it has that kind of like more like oh, oh, you fly, oh. kind of gu not guttural, but kind of like more barking, yelling to his voice. It's not like super low, but if you know Engraved in Black by Across the Crown, you will know what I mean. The production's kind of a little bit muddy. I wish it was slightly clearer, but for this type of death metal, it fits good to the music. It's me kind of nitpicking, I guess. And it's a good mixture of kind of faster. More almost kind of not quite 
not quite grind code speeds, but almost a mixture of that with some kind of slower, more mid paced sections. So it's nice variety of speeds that way you don't get bored over time. Great songwriting too. There's a, I think there's an intro on on both sides of the record, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they had an intro on side A and side B, but it's kind of useless. But anyway, front cover. There's the back. There's the front back. Track listing, put out for Nuclear War now again, which is who I bought this from. Nice red. It almost matches the printing on my shirt. It looks more pink on the video, but it's definitely very red. And all, it comes with a Nuclear War now order sheet, which I already showed you with the center tab, so I don't need to show you that again. But it comes with the... I don't know why they did this, they put a really small poster with lyrics on the back, so if you want the lyrics and you want the poster, you have to buy a separate poster, so good job NWN, I don't know why they did that, but anyway, again, that's just me nitpicking, I guess. If you like Utopia Banish Era, Napalm Death, and Great and Black Era across the crown, you don't know Vim and Thrower, check this one out. More people need to talk about this record. I think I've seen... I want to say Ben and Justin Stubbs talked about this before, and I think that's it. But I could be wrong, maybe someone else did, but just those two that I've seen talk about this record. But definitely more people need to talk about this record. Get, off, get on this shit, great record. Vim and Thrower, I come in peace, check this one out. Okay, so next up we got another Death Metal record. This is Punch and Stench with Ben Carr Buttering. Very weird album title and very weird cover art, which apparently this isn't two people kissing. It's apparently one guy's severed head cut in half, but just kind of like they do this to his head. So it looks like he's kissing somebody, which is kind of odd, but I guess interesting or weird, whatever. And musically, this sounds kind of like the Finnish death metal stuff, but. Not like convulsive demigod, it's more of like Yizmo or Lubricant, so it's more on the death and roll side, but it's not like Wolverine Blues and Tombs, so it's actually good death and roll, not like that piece of garbage, but anyway. This record's mostly mid paced and kind of groovy, but not like a Pantera shit way, more in like a, the Yizmo or the Lubricant kind of groovy way. And the vocals are kind of. Just the typical gutturals, nothing very like out there or original, but still gets the job done and fits the music. And this is their second record. This is originally released in 1991 following, I think a demo that was split with Disharmonic, Disharmonic Orchestra and a couple EPs and their first full length, For God Your Soul For Me Your Flesh. Yeah, that's what, the, that's what it was called, but this is my favorite thing by them. I think it's definitely the most memorable. The first three records are solid too, but this band is not very prolific because they don't put out material very often. Though they have broken up like four or five times, so that doesn't really help anything, but they're supposed to be playing MDF, which I kind of don't think it's going to happen. It's probably going to be pushed to 2022, but I already have my tickets for MDF, so if you're going to MDF, come say what's up. Anyway, very weird cover. There's the front. I don't need to sh show this again. There's the back guys in the band, track listing. Put out through Back on Black, which who, they get a bad rap. I don't know why people shit on Back on Black. Every record I have by Back on Black sounds fine, so I don't know why people shit on them a lot. Lyrics, guys in the band. And I got this through NWN again. Cool, clear, or silver, I say clear. Nice silver record with a weird cover it again. I was playing this last night. Does all it come with? Yeah, it's all it comes with. If you like stuff like y Yizma and Lubricant, that kind of sweet f finished death metal stuff, and you don't know Punch and Stench, definitely a great record. Punch and Stench, Ben Cott Buttering, check this one out if you're not familiar. Okay, these last two, F1 and the Mother, knows, this, knows these bands, I'm not going to go into much detail about them. This is Iron Maiden with Live Legacy of the Beast, Live in Mexico City. Yeah, Legacy of the Beast, Live in Mexico City. So this is obviously a live record that was put out. I came out this year, uh, 2020, but the shows I think are from 20, 
2018, 2019. Yeah, 2018, 2019. Obviously, I doubt they didn't. They probably didn't play any of these shows in 2020. Well, maybe in no, because the first shows in 2020 were gonna be May and June and July, and those obviously didn't happen. And 2021, yeah, 2021. The only shows that are happening is June and July. Anyway, we all know what Maiden sounds like. I don't need to go into the music, but just read off the track listing. It's this high, where Eagles dare, two minutes to midnight, the Klansman, the Trooper, Revelations. For the greater good of God, the wicked man, sign of the cross, flight of Icarus, fear of the dark, number of the beast, Iron Maiden, the evil that men do and run to the hills. So, they played three songs off of the stuff with Blaze, but I know those records get a bad rap, which I'm not going to defend those records. I fucking hate those records, but... I know people say, oh, it's only because of Blaze, the songs with Bruce are good. Not really, those songs are kind of garbage even with Bruce singing on them, but that's just me. Anyway, front cover. There's the back. Guys playing live, the track listing I just read off. And this is a triple gatefold. And I'll show you this. Very quick. That's every tour, every show for the Legacy of the Beast tour. Though obviously all the 2021 dates didn't happen, but they rescheduled it. You can see in the bottom with the little indent soul. Right there, you probably can't see it, but it shows that which shows would have been cancelled and which shows just got pushed back. Only a few shows got cancelled, so that's nice. And I'll show you this gatefold better because. I guess there was a theme for each one, so this one is, I think, war, religion, and then hell. That's very really cool. Obviously, I'm not cluing anybody into Maiden today, I just want to show that I got this. But Maiden, Live Legacy of the Beast. I would say check it out, but we all know fucking Maiden, so there's no point. Okay, last one, then we're done. This is Motorhead, just the self-titled Motorhead, so this record is definitely not one of their best. Mainly because it's not really, doesn't really sound like a Motorhead, it sounds kind of like a more aggressive version of Hawkwind, which I know some people have said that, but good, good comparison, I guess. This record is definitely by far the most punk sounding Motorhead record. If you're a punker, then you kind of, you don't want to, you're not familiar with Motorhead for some reason, but if you're a punk fan, I definitely suggest start with this record and work your way back, work your way forward. But if you're a metal fan, I would say stay. for some reason you don't know Motorhead, but we all do. But for some reason you've been living underneath a rock for your whole life, I would say start with the record after this and work your way forward and find this one later. But definitely not one of the best, but still, it's still good. It's kind of not very memorable or special. Anyway, front cover. There's the back track listing. And I'm not explaining what Motorhead sounds like. We all know what Motorhead sounds like. Come on. That's like me explaining what Black Sabbath sounds like. There's no point. White record. And somehow the side of the record got water damage. So that's annoying. It doesn't affect the play at all. It's kind of annoying. Inner sheet. Like Maiden, I'm not cleaning by the end of Motorhead. I'm sure we all have at least one Motorhead record, if not multiple in our collection. Motorhead, Motorhead, check this one out if you're not familiar for some reason. Okay, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Next video, I might do a collection update with some CDs and tapes I've gotten in recently. But if you don't want to see that, you want to see me go back to the to the vaults, I guess, and show some more records in my collection not to an update let me know i wish i had the 1000 subs so i could do a like poll thing on the community tab but i don't have 1000 subs yet so click click that subscribe button it won't hurt see you guys later have a good rest of your weekend goodbye